Uh, hello, um, I'm not 100% sure if I can be heard, uh, but I'll continue hoping that I can. Hello, everybody. My name is John Parsons, and I uh, was a friend and colleague of Yelena Solovova, and it's my honor today to uh, say a few words uh, about her in her memory. So, um, I'll just set my timer so as not to overrun. First of all, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how I met uh, Elena Nikolaevna, um, because it, the actual meeting of her says something about her, something about her character. Um, and I met her a few times, actually. This is going back about 15 years ago. I'd met her at conferences of one kind or another, because in those days I was involved in importing uh, academic and ELT materials into Russia. And uh, one day I had her business card, that's all, and I'd spoken maybe a few words with her, but uh, one of the big British publishers asked if I would introduce her to Elena. So I, I made a phone call, I introduced them, and this uh, large publishing company asked her, would you write uh, a book for us and she said I'm ever so sorry I'm so busy I have so many projects I would love to and uh, eventually this uh, lady from a big publishing house left the office and I said to Elena I'm so sorry to have, you're obviously extremely busy uh, is everything okay by the way and she said well not really and she explained to me that uh, and it was evening time already, it was six or seven o'clock in the evening, and she explained that there was an emergency staff meeting going on, and she had to attend it, and it meant that she would be occupied until 10 o'clock that evening. But the problem was she was supposed to be using that time to prepare texts and to prepare tasks for a group of children that were going to be um, working with prototype versions of the Yege the following morning. So she was saying, now I have to be in the meeting until 10 in the evening, and then I have to work on these texts and tasks. And I said, well, I could write some text for you maybe to make it a little bit easier. I, I was just offering to be helpful. I, I didn't actually think that she would agree, but she said, oh, would you? Then she left me with a biro and a piece of paper and some practice tests from previous years, and off she went to this staff meeting. Well, uh, as a result, I worked all the time she was away, and I looked at the models, and I created some tasks and some texts. And when she came back, I said, oh, look, I've done two or three variants for grammar and Lexis. I did this for reading. I hope some of it is useful and I wished her good night and goodbye. She called me two days later. And she said, oh, it was a great success. And uh, the children really enjoyed the, 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 the uh, texts and it went very well. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm really pleased, Yelena, that's good news. Uh, it was very easy for me, of course, because I'm a native speaker. And, and she said, let's work together. Hmm, that was a surprise. And that was the beginning. That was Yelena Solovova. It all happened so spontaneously and out of uh, people interaction. And as a result, we prepared, I think, about 12 or 15 books together of uh, practice tests. And very early on, she taught me uh, about the Russian national exam and what it involved. She explained to me that you have to prepare children for the reality of what they will encounter. You must prepare them. You must make your uh, texts and your tasks even harder in some cases, or certainly as hard as what they will experience on the fateful day when they sit down to take their exam. And so she was always chasing me, saying, you've got to make it harder. You've got to make it uh, difficult, more difficult for them to differentiate. Uh, she explained to me uh, the different competences that are involved in that exam. So it's not just English language, grammar, and so on. 
it's also about uh, cultural awareness it's also about uh, deductive reasoning and so forth and she encouraged me to use my own experiences because in fact I spent I was a regular visitor to Russia for about 20 years and I traveled all over Russia all the big cities of Russia and she said John use these experiences so for example if we did some uh, a reading piece let's say on borders international borders I was able to use uh, one text about crossing the English Channel from England into France on the tunnel or the channel as we call it but I was also able to recount in this reading piece walking along uh, the river embankment in Khabarovsk and looking across the river to China on the other side because I had experienced that and she wanted me to always use uh, those kind of authentic experiences of a native speaker encountering Russian culture, Russian language, Russian people, and to put it into those tasks. So when we did a piece on, on lakes, uh, I talked about Ullswater in the English Lake District where Wordsworth wrote his poems, but I also talked about walking across Lake Baikal at winter, which I have the real joy and privilege of doing uh, a number of years ago. And meetings with real people, real dialogue. So I talked about white nights in St. Petersburg. I talked about meeting friends to celebrate Pushkin's birthday. I talked about Moscow's birthday, the city of Moscow's birthday and events. I talked about meeting my godson, Stepan, uh, and what we did. And I kept pouring out this material and she kept turning it into relevant, accurate tasks to meet the needs of the students who had to take that exam. And you know, uh, she did so much experimentation with how students use the time. In What do they actually do in the first 10 minutes of an exam? What do they do in the first 30 minutes of an exam? And she kept preparing materials and she wouldn't she wouldn't brief the children in advance she would let the the test run and then tell them surprise them all by asking them to stop and then she would study what they had actually done and so she developed strategies exam strategies to help them get through now our typical routine uh when i was in moscow was for her to get me to meet her at a tube at the metro station because she knew that I would get lost if she gave me an address. So we would always meet somewhere uh, on the metro, then we would go for breakfast, and then we would fight over who paid because she was very generous and I wanted to pay and she wanted to pay. And then we would work in the cafe for a bit, then we would go to a nearby office where she was working at that time, formerly at the university. In recent years, we'd meet at the Moscow Higher School of Economics. Then we'd go for lunch, working all the time and then afterwards very often on two or three occasions she asked me she said John what are you doing for the rest of the day and I would say nothing um, no I, I'm just going back to my apartment in Oktobska Polya uh, out for dinner later then I have two meetings tomorrow then I'm going home yes yes John but what are you doing now oh I think I'll just go walking Yelena just through Moscow just anywhere and on two or three occasions she said can I come with you can you imagine how honored I felt because I knew how busy she was she had so many tasks so many projects and she was wanting to go for a, a walk with me but that's what we would do and we would just walk and we would talk we would talk politics we would talk culture we would talk music we would talk about our respective families. On one occasion, I met the family at the uh, lovely dacha out of Moscow. I remember a very, very hot weekend, and I enjoyed that so much. And I enjoyed her so much. She was a hard, hard-working lady. She was completely dedicated, and I consider it a privilege, personal privilege, to have spent that time so to those of you in the conference today, 
uh, I wish you success. To Yelena, if she was still with us, I'd be wishing her happy birthday. As it is, I miss her and I will remember her. But I wish all of you an excellent, excellent conference. And from Brighton, England, on a very sunny day with blue skies, I wish all of you good luck. God bless you all and goodbye. Thank you for listening to me. Goodbye.